Welcome to the next episode of the vSphere Breakroom Chats. I am Harshad Kolte. I am Product Marketing Manager at Broadcom. And I am work on the team that's responsible for vSphere Core and vSphere Foundation at VMware. Uh, this is my first Breakroom Chat, but as a reminder, in this series, we bring Broadcom and our partner experts to discuss Broadcom's vSphere and cloud products. Um, today, I'm very excited to talk to Himanshu Singh, who incidentally is also my boss. Uh, welcome, Himanshu. Thank you, uh, and I'm glad to be here. This is my first break room chat as well, so I'm, I'm glad you gave me a break on the, on your big show. Awesome, thank you. Uh, in today's episode, we want to give some background on the creation of VVF as a product and its unique unique place in the uh, VMware uh, portfolio. Um, how about you give a quick introduction about yourself? Yeah, so um, I've been with uh, VMware for a little over 11 years, or VMware by Broadcom at this point. Uh, so we've done a few different things, uh, you know, in cloud management, with compute platform. And so right now, I think our team focuses on compute and AI at this point, and we run product marketing. So that's kind of, you know, what it is. And I think it's uh, the two best things you could do in the world is what our team focuses on. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. And in the tradition of our break room chats, and I know you're sitting in this cafe, um, tradition says that we at least mention our favorite drinks. So I'll tell mine, although my background says otherwise, my favorite drink, I'm a mixologist, is something called a Flaming Lamborghini. Folks who are uh, listening to this chat, please go Google it. It's a fancy drink. Uh, you set things to the fire and you know it, it's pleasure to drink as well as view. But do a Google and you'll be able to see what that drink is. How about yours? What's your favorite drink? Yeah, mine's, mine's not as explosive as yours. Uh, so I, I will mention two, right? So given summer is coming, like for me, a, a nice iced tea in the afternoon is, is mm -hmm. fantastic. But otherwise, like in the evenings, just a good old, you know, old fashioned for me. Yeah, that, awesome. that does the job. Cool. I'm a, I'm a big fan of those two. All right, let's jump into today's topic. So Imanchu, VVF is still pretty new. Uh, why don't you give our you, viewers some background of what it is and how it came to be? Yeah, so VMware vSphere Foundation, you know, uh, or VVF, uh, I think neither the name or the uh, acronym might be super easy to say, but anyway, it is what it is now, you know. Uh, we So we're stuck with it or, or our customers are stuck with it. So the key idea here is that as we, um, you know, went through the acquisition by Broadcom, there's a massive simplification that we've done of our entire portfolio of offerings from VMware specifically. And as part of that, we ended up with two main offerings. Uh, uh, well, actually four, but two main offerings. One is VMware Cloud Foundation, which is the top end full stack private cloud. And then something which is a lot more fundamental set of capabilities, which is, you know, vSphere Foundation is what we're kind of talking about right now. Uh, and that is where we write the compute platform, the engine that powers your workloads, along with our key uh, intelligence operation capabilities to improve your operational efficiency and those kind of things uh, as well. And I think um, that's, you know, that's kind of how it came together to address that workload, uh, that need in the market. Um, there's other capability, the other um, offerings we have as well at the lower end, like, you know, things like vSphere Standard, or vSphere uh, Essentials Plus, et cetera, like, like you're showing, you know, here on the screen. And uh, so the idea is we have, you know, different uh, level of additions of vSphere to address different needs of uh, customers, specifically in vSphere Foundation, uh, I'll call this out in terms of, um, you know, what are the components, right? So we, of course we start with vSphere Enterprise Plus. Now, previously this edition of vSphere was available uh, standalone. Now it is only available as part of VVF or VCF Cloud Foundation, right? Uh, in VVF, along with uh, uh, vSphere Enterprise Plus, you also includes vCenter standard. Uh, so you don't have to purchase vCenter separately like you had to do before. It also includes tons of Kubernetes grid, also includes uh, ARIA operations capabilities uh, that is soon to be called, uh, you know, VMware Cloud Foundation operations as we move forward. And then there's also a bunch of uh, add-ons that are available with uh, vSphere Foundation as well, right? So the key piece is that if, if you are somebody who's using naked vSphere, as we call it, right, or, you know, whether it is vSphere Standard or vSphere Enterprise Plus, you'll find a lot of key capabilities that are extremely useful and fundamental to your IT environment uh, and running a, you know, a better and more optimized uh, uh, IT environment in general. So uh, really excited to bring this. This is mass appeal type of uh, you know solution. Absolutely. And we, uh, you know, it's great that you explained the different editions that are available with vSphere. 
um going back to the actual creation of eSphere foundation like what were some of the customer challenges or pain points right that really determined okay this is what we are going to deliver in eSphere foundation yeah so um you know we basically went back and said okay uh, for the typical kind of vSphere environment what are some of the things or any kind of it environment what are some of the basic things that customers really really are looking forward to right one is if you have an it environment you want to make sure that you get the most out of it right you want to you want to have intelligent operations management capabilities so that you know you can you can meet the needs of your end users so you want to make sure that you have that capability you want to make sure that your infrastructure that you have uh, you know, it it's provides the performance that is needed for your traditional workloads as well as some of the newer modern workloads, and whether it is like containerized or AI, et cetera, et cetera. So that's another kind of, you know, key challenge that, that uh, customers focus on or a need that customers have. Another one is around making sure that there is a, uh, you know, the platform that customers use enables both IT and developers and DevOps teams to really collaborate well with each other. Uh, because that's another key piece where you don't want to have, you know, um, either bottlenecks or silos to be forming, which is a, you know, so we, that that's a key facilitation need there as well. And and uh, the fourth key one, I think, is the most universal piece, which is about security and compliance, right? So making sure that your entire IT environment is secure, as well as you are you know, make, meeting any kind of like regulatory compliance and those kind of things needs as well. So I think those four are fundamentally kind of the big areas that we uh, keep hearing from customers that where you know that where the fundamental challenges are and that's kind of how we thought, thought about uh, creating visa foundation to address those needs great awesome i know i think just to give context to the our audience i think these were the messaging pillars that we kind of refer to um, kind of giving a one you know a notch deeper into each of these can you kind kind of summarize very high level some of the features in these these domains yeah, so if you think about, uh, you know, Visa Foundation, those are the four kind of fundamental areas in which we kind of deliver value to our customers, right? Uh, the, the Probably the biggest piece is around boosting operational efficiency because of bringing in the, the ARIA operations capabilities and with ARIA logs as well, in, in fact, right? And so want to make sure that you're getting the most utilization uh, of your existing capacity, right? That's a big piece where, you know, as customers uh, add on some of these capabilities around ops, ops management, they are able to reclaim a lot of capacity from existing resources, be able to f support a lot more of the newer projects that might be coming up without having to go procure new hardware. So the customers see a lot of savings, uh, you know, in this case, uh, in terms of just getting a lot more out of what they have. We have. Then there's things like, you know, the predictive analytics, uh, the faster troubleshooting capabilities we deliver, a lot of the performance monitoring, et cetera, that we deliver through VVF that helps uh, our customers to meet our SLAs, exceed our SLAs whenever they need to meet the needs of their end customers, their lines of business, for example, right? And at the end of it, it's all about making sure that IT is able to manage across the, the tight budgets that they typically have. So that's kind of the, the first one when you think about like being able to boost the operational efficiency of your environment. The second one I will talk about is like the supercharged workload performance. And this is where, you know, you have to think about any kind of modern workloads that require high performance, whether it is like traditional like HPC type of workload that we used to talk about before, or more currently AI ML, generative AI, for example, or just, you know, containerized modern applications that require a lot of performance. So we, you know, through Visa Foundation, through, uh, you know, Core Visa itself as well, we make sure that we have support for things like GPUs, DPUs, right, data processing units, to be able to, you know, meet the needs of these newer workloads. And also, in the case of DPUs, be able to offload certain, you know, infrastructure functions from the CPU to the DPU, so that you're able to boost the performance. And then also, if you need to, you can reclaim more resources and be able to support more uh, high performance applications, etc. So the idea is, we, you know, it, and it comes as an overall package, right? So you you are able to manage these applications, you're able to get all the right like workload placement, balance, et cetera. All of it kind of works together. The traditional resource capabilities like DRS and, and vMotion, they're all coming together uh, along with some of the newer capabilities to kind of deliver that high performance from your, uh, you know, that your workloads really need, okay? So uh, that's kind of, you know, the second one. The third big one is around, and this is actually extremely important because, uh, you know, more and more customers are looking to run 
and you know, build and run applications that require both virtual machines and containers, right? Either within the same applications or at least on the same platform. And so one of the key things that Visa Foundation does is it provides that, uh, that IaaS control plane to be able to one, run both VMs and containers on the same platform, on the same uh, substrate, essentially, manage it in the same way, use the same you know, single API to be able to access them. And so you have like one unified platform to be able to run all that. It gives the IT teams the control then they need, the governance that they need to be able to set up these sandbox environments for devs, DevOps, and end consumers to use. And within that sandbox environment, those teams are now have full self-service access to leverage infrastructure resources so that IT is an enabler and not a bottleneck. And that's huge when it comes to making sure that customers are innovating faster, being able to you know get to market faster. Okay. Uh, and then the last one I want to call out is just looking at from a security perspective, and that's a that's a always a you know an important one because you have to think about uh, the the overall kind of compute infrastructure that we provide that fundamentally supports everything that you're building on top of it, right? For your overall IT infrastructure, uh, it's secure. Uh, all the capabilities that would go into it are kind of secure by default, essentially. And we have capable things like, you know, making sure that we're providing uh, encryption for data, both at rest and in motion. Uh, we're making sure that you're, le you're able to leverage things like, uh, you know, modern identity federation uh, capabilities, security through multi-factor authentication, et cetera, et cetera, and a, and a whole host of different things that kind of, you know, core vSphere has provided, and we continue to innovate and add more and more as we go forward. Also, previously I talked about, you know, things like compliance, for example. So that, that kind of governance, compliance needs, meet, you know, meeting industry standards or regulatory uh, requirements, that's extremely key as well. So that, uh, you know, customers are, uh, you know, audit ready, for example, all the time. Uh, so those, I think, you know, four key areas, uh, there's a ton of value that we deliver for our customers. As you can see, you know, in this, of course, conversation, there's just not enough time to talk about everything, but we wanted to give people a, a kind of a flavor of what uh, Visa Foundation delivers. Absolutely. And you can tell uh, for the audience, uh, Himanshu is so passionate about this product. He has been with, uh, has seen vSphere go through all of those changes. And now with vSphere Foundation, you know, we are really excited that we are bringing it to the audience. And although it's new, right? And um, there are some real benefits. We did a re recent uh, TEI study and there are some real um, uh, numbers that we have uh, on on some of the performance metrics that or enhancements that we are getting from from this uh, BBF product, we are, you know, seventy seven percent reduction in operational efficiency, uh, twenty percent reduction in resolution time, you know, savings in hardware costs, and so much more. Uh, but uh, I, I think uh, I would like to thank you, uh, Himanshu, for coming on this break room chat and helping educate our audience. And uh, with that, I think we are coming to the close of the episode. Thanks to, um, so much for joining us today. Uh, thanks, Imanchu, for sharing your uh, all the insights on VBF. And uh, for yeah. our audience, uh, we'll be continuing this the break room chat series. There are three more coming, which will tell uh, help you get educated even more on VBF. So thank you. Thanks again, Himanchu. See you. Thanks all. so much, folks. Thanks for having me, Arshad. Take care, folks.